Okay, unfortunately, back at it again, fixing the 2008 Honda Civic in the dead of winter this time, so couldn't be a better time of the year to work on the car. Uh, luckily, we've got a couple 50 to 60 degree days here in January, so I'm gonna take advantage of it. Something I noticed when it started getting cold was this, this car was very hard to start. It almost seemed like it was a dead battery, but it wasn't. I actually replaced the battery because it was old anyway. I had one uh, laying around, as a matter of fact. Put that in, the next day we had a nice 15 degree day and it was very hard to start. Also diagnosed the alternator as not being the problem as I had that checked too. So what happens on these is the starter just wears out. This car has uh, 245,000 miles on it now I believe with the original starter. So it's not that uncommon th for those to fail at uh, that type of mileage. So really what you're gonna notice when your starter starts to fail is that the engine will just turn over very slowly or maybe your starter will make a clicking sound like tick, 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 tick. And sometimes that's just the dead battery. Well, if you eliminate the dead battery as not being the cause, you eliminate the alternator as not being the cause, look to your starter, uh, especially on a car with high miles like this one, that's probably going to be what's wrong with it. I actually had a friend of mine who had a car, a 2006 model, and it did the exact same thing. It baffled us for a long time until we finally figured out, hey, let's just change the start and see what happens. Fixed it right away. So um, that's what's going on right now. With this 50 degree day uh, today, this car starts actually pretty well, uh, but you can still kind of tell it's a little groggy uh, when it wants to turn over. So listen for that sound, and if it sounds like a battery and it's not the battery, look to your starter, that's probably the problem. So today I'm gonna change that out. Uh, I don't think it's gonna be easy. I've watched a few videos and I'm actually gonna do it slightly different, uh, maybe a little bit easier for those of us um, that don't have the experience as say, you know, a mechanic would have. Well, I'm gonna try a couple different methods and hopefully this one um, works out just a little bit easier, but we'll see. All right, well stay tuned, uh, we'll get started with this. Okay, one of the first things we need to do is lift the car off the ground. I've actually drove the rear wheels up on these ramps to give us some uh, more clearance, uh, kind of just throughout the car. And then I used um, the biggest jack I had and uh, got it up as high as I could here. So you're gonna wanna do that. You're gonna want all the working space you can get, especially with this one, it is a little cramped. So make sure you're giving yourself uh, enough height on your vehicle in order to work on it and make this less painful. The second thing we're gonna do is remove this passenger tire as well as the splash shield in there. We're gonna to need to do that in order to remove the starter or uh, replace it through an opening there. We might also use uh, some pretty long extensions to get at some of the starter bolts and we'll, we would be um, going through an opening that is located behind the wheel and uh, the splash guard. So that's what we're gonna do next. Now that we've got the wheel off, all we need to do is remove this panel right here. And uh, that's gonna let us kind of just have access back in this area a little bit better. Um, so just remove these two pins. If you break these, um, you can get these at an auto parts store. So take them off carefully if you can, but if you break them, it's not the end of the world. That's how this should come out. That tuck that underneath the car, you'll be all set. Next step is to disconnect your battery. Negative terminal is always best. If you've got an original battery, maybe the same original uh, battery terminal, it's going to be a 10 millimeter. I've changed mine. This is an aftermarket one, so we've got an 11. Just like that. Okay, we are on the underside of the vehicle and this right here is our starter. Now you can see it is definitely old, so um, yeah, it, it needs replaced. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is remove some of the bracketry and wiring that is connecting this guy. Then we can start tackling the bolts. Okay, I'm kind of more on the driver's side area of the car, and the first wire connection we need to get rid of is this green one right here. You can see right where the end of my pointer um, thing is, there's a little clip and you just have to pull this direction towards the driver's side wheel and it'll come right off. See? 
just that tab moves right over and it will come right up just like that okay this is our second one and I am more on the passenger side now pointing at this right here and again you can see the tab right in the middle sticking up right here you just need to push that towards the engine and it'll come right off that goes in lift up all right the next thing we need to take off is this bracket right here and you'll see there's two bolts right here these are 10 millimeter and there's one down here this is 12 millimeter and before I take those off I just want to give you perspective of my view of this fix in case this is confusing because looking under cars you're not necessarily oriented correctly you don't know where the cameraman is so here's where I am that's the front of the engine we got our exhaust pipe coming back all the way to the cross member here and I am looking at it kind of downrange I'm going to go up underneath and uh, get those bolts but that is where the bracket is. it is kind of underneath all this stuff right here but I found it kind of best to sit back right at the exhaust flange here and uh, just work from there. So again, I'm going to take these two bolts, remove them. They are 10 millimeter. And I'm using a ratchet with a very long extension, although you probably could get your hands up in there, but this is how I'm doing it. That came out very easily. I'll move to the next one. Again, easy to knock that one off too. So now we'll get that 12 millimeter right there. Okay, now to get the 12 millimeter, and this is how I'm attacking this one from this direction. There we go. Again, easy to pop off. Now to just spin these off by hand. And there we go. All right, now that we've got the wires and that bracket off, we can start taking the bolts off the starter. Now there's one bolt that's real easy to get to. We'll do that second. Let's do the hardest one first. Um, and it is very hard to capture this bolt and where it exactly is on film. Um, but right up under the intake here, can you see that the head of the bolt is right there? I know that's tricky to see. It's a very long bolt that actually you can still see it better um, going up under the intake here, starting there, running all the way back, and even right here right there that's the bolt okay and that's the one that is pretty lengthy and we're gonna have to um, I think use a jointed um, driver socket in order to get that bolt off that's a little bit better view the head of it is right here and let's try to do that okay I hope you can see this um, again I'm in the same spot I've got the 14 millimeter socket over the bolt. I actually ditched the uh, deep socket and went with the standard socket. And then you can see I have um, a swivel head attached to that. And then I have what? One, two, three, um, I think four extensions on this all the way down. So I'm at this angle right here. Now it was a little tight, but just keep turning on it and you'll get it. Once you pop it loose, it's gonna be nice and loose for you. I'm sorry, once you pop it loose, uh, the bolt will be fairly easy to turn. So that's how I approach this, and it seems to have done the job. Trying to capture a little of this bolt being removed. You can see my extensions turning there, and you can see the head of the bolt turning there. And if we walk on past the exhaust, you can see the bolt turning right through there. So it's a long one, but uh, it actually wasn't bad. So don't be too afraid of this bolt, um, as long as you have um, a, a few extensions on hand, you're, you're going to be fine. All right, I think it's loose. Yep, here we go. And we'll just bring her on down. So to give you a 
give you an idea of how many extensions I had on there. Uh, it's not too terrible, but there's the bolt. We got our, our swivel head. I'm sorry, swivel head right here. Standard 14 millimeter. Uh, we got smaller extension here. Then one, two, three extensions. That's it. All right, our second bolt is gonna be a lot easier. It's this one right here. And again, 14 millimeter. I'm just gonna go ahead and leave on all the extensions and work my ratchet and extensions over this motor mount here. It's gonna come right down through here. And we're just gonna get our angle of attack hit there if you wanna consider it as that. And uh, go from there, but I think this one's gonna be pretty easy. So let's see if I can actually get all of this on video. All right, well, at least you can see the socket going on there, but that's how we're doing this, um, all the way down like that. Kind of as expected, this one's coming out pretty easy. Actually, uh, this one took a bit more uh, torque than the other one to break loose, but just get, some, get enough on there and it'll come right out. All right. That's it, there she is. Now we can move the starter and get working on the electrical disconnections. Okay, we're gonna do our best to get that tab undone. I'm actually taking a long screwdriver and I'm gonna put pressure against the starter so it doesn't move. And then I'm also gonna work that tab out with an even longer screwdriver. So let's see if we can get it done. Let's make sure first that we have our starter nice and wedged so it can't move on us. That way we have a better chance of getting this tab uh, through. Alright. I think we got it. I just need to kind of help it through. I'm just going to hit it. There we go out perfect okay now that we've got our bolts out our wiring harness is um, big disconnected in the first step and now we got that tab out we need to rotate the starter around so we can get uh, the electrical electrical connections removed and it might take you a little bit of work to do that but just keep at it as I am doing, and uh, you'll get it. Okay, just continue to wiggle it around. Make sure, I was getting kind of hung up, this wire right here, or this uh, series, or a group of wires was kind of hanging me up on the opposite side, so um, now that I've got that out of the way, I'm able to turn this a little bit more and drop it down, and we're going to, let's see, it's going to be a nut right here underneath um, this weather shielding. See if we can pull that off. This would be a lot easier if it was just easier. Oh, here we go. There's a nice thing you can just pull on. Do you see that? Right here. You just pull on it. That exposes it. Maybe you can see that. Maybe you can't. This right here. This guy. And then you can see we've got a nut right there. That's going to be a 12 millimeter. Come in and get this thing hooked up. I'm using my extra long extension again. Coming pretty handy. There we go. All right, there we go. Now this should just come off. We got one more connection. It's kind of hiding. Okay, this is our last connection. 
I rotated the stern around so you could see it a little bit better and all we need to do is push down on it and it should snap right up just like that and pull it away okay and now our starter is free we we'll just need to get it out of here all right uh, that is our starter back there and again I'm gonna try to sneak it right through here that's why we took that splash guard off you may not need to take it off but it's probably not a terrible idea it's pretty easy to remove so let's see if we can get this guy out of here Grab it. it should pull right out definitely got enough room yep even got it one-handed all right it's out it is out all right here's our new starter in all its glory I acquired this guy off of Amazon for under a hundred bucks recommend you do the same I will link a description to this um, so you can go ahead and pick it up there one more tip don't forget to remove this nut before you put the starter in it's gonna make your life a little bit easier there's also a lock washer on here um, that, uh, there we go. Well, keep this one on, but uh, the lock washer goes after. Okay, just as we took the starter out this way, we're going to put it back in the same way. There we go. It's going to be good enough for now. I'll get underneath the car and position it how I need it in order to install the electrical connections. Just trying to get the power wire back onto the uh, terminal here. And it is a kind of a tricky view. So just taking this guy and we're gonna put him right back over that bolt. Um, so uh, next step, we just need to maneuver this starter back into position, orientate it correctly, and we'll be able to put the bolts back in. So let's do that right now. Okay, it takes a little bit of doing. <laughs> you just kind of have to wiggle this thing around. There's no way for me to capture that really on video. There's, there's just not enough room to record and do that at the same time. But um, it basically goes back in the way it comes out, imagine that. But you are, you're gonna have to make sure you're, you're checking your clearances, especially this lower bolt tab right here. Um, it's gonna want to interfere with the CV axle right here. Make sure you just maneuver this kind of, this ear around the CV axle first. And that's actually gonna give you room to push it up here. And then uh, this tab right here, this shiny silver one, is going to want to get hung up on this bolt right here. So slide up there and, and then it's just a matter of pressing it back in like I'm doing. Um, trust me, it was, it was nice and steady in there a minute ago. But anyway, uh, we're just going to have to run the bolts in from this point and we should be all set. So let's do that right now. Let's see if I can get this through. We'll kind of tighten this one up so far as the starter is, um, you know, snug and nice against uh, the transmission here. But I'm not going to make it super tight, obviously. We still need to get that upper bolt in as well. So we'll pick up at that point. Um, we, we got lucky. Uh, it actually went in really easily. Um, sorry, again, this is as good as I can do on, on camera work, but it is going up there. One last picture. This is how I'm tackling this. Just, uh, just like that. So, yep, it's going in. Okay, as you can see, I got the bolts tight 
and I'm just hooking the um, electrical back up and just remember we took that extra one off over here on this side so make sure you hook that one back up and uh, now it's just a point of putting that bracket back on and hooking the battery back up and we will be all set so I'm not going to show those steps you know how to do that if you got this far we'll pick it up in just a minute okay that's a wrap the job is complete and i couldn't be happier really thankful for the 55 degree day i can't imagine if it were 15 degrees out and maybe two weeks in the future having to change this would have been pretty difficult but really it wasn't that bad i think on a scale from one to five five being the hardest i'd probably put this at a three and a half to a four um, it would have been even easier if i didn't have to film it but as long as you have the right tools and a good part of your saturday you should be able to knock this out but speaking of filming, if this video helped you, please help me and hit the subscribe button. Once I get to a thousand subscribers, YouTube might actually monetize this channel, which would be awesome. So please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. If you got any questions or comments, please leave them below. Thanks a lot and good luck.